Welcome back for lesson two of our harp. Um, today I want to spend time on the topic of tuning your harp. What I've found is that um, this is probably one of the more challenging areas because if you're not tuned correctly then your music doesn't sound right and a lot of people tell me that they just can't get past the tuning. So I just wanted to spend a little bit of time on that today. Um, next lesson we'll start actually playing some music. Uh, but today I want to uh, work with the tuning because if you have a well-tuned instrument then your music sounds so much better. And since we have, in this case, 26 strings, and in many cases over 30 strings, uh, it takes a bit of time and uh, effort to do the tuning. Uh, with the modern tuners, uh, I have a chord tuner here. If you can see that, I'll try to hold it so you can focus. Um, this is an electronic tuner. I like it. Uh, there are other brands out there. Uh, I found the cork to be very nice. Um, it'll make your job a lot easier. One of the features I like about this cork is that you can see I have a, um, a plug-in here, and on the other end of the plug-in is a transducer. And what happens is, if you plug this into your tuner and then clip, clip this on the back or some place where you can, on the wood of the harp anyway. I like to do it back here because this is the sound chamber where the vibrations are the best. You'll find that um, your tuning is even easier because it takes out all of the surrounding noises and only concentrates on what the harp is doing. And so, um, I really like it, especially sometimes I'm with a lot of other musicians. They're tuning, there's noise going on, they're doing, practicing some of the licks on their music they're going to be performing, and there's just all these tones going on, and it's very difficult if you just have this holding up next to the string trying to tune um, to actually get the sound of what the string is doing. So this transducer really isolates the sound, makes it so much easier, and I would recommend it's an extra $20 or so, but I would recommend it. Um, if you're going to get a tuner, might as well do it right. Um, I've seen other tuners that will actually clip on, um, and you can just have a readout right there. That's fine. Um, that works well, too. I like this because it's long enough that I can set it over here, or set it beside me, set it on my leg or whatever and uh, I can be looking down and see what the needle's doing. So I like this, it, and your preference uh, can obviously be different than mine. I'm just going to show you how this one works today. The first thing you're going to do is to turn it on. And that, uh, I don't know if you can see, if I put this up close, if you can see the needle on the side. And if I put, pluck a note, that needle moves. And you can see that there's a little bit of a red along with the green light. Maybe I should pull back here a little bit. That means that that note is a little bit flat. And what we want to do is we want to keep tuning until that note comes perfectly green right in the middle. The needle is right on the middle. And then we'll know that that string is just in tune. Now you'll also know right up here on, the, on this corner, uh, let's see, let's put it back here this corner here, there's also the note F. And if I went down here, it would say E, and that would say D, and then that will say C, all up in that corner there. So that tells you what note you're working on, and it tells you how f sharp or flat you are according to where the needle's pointing. So that's what you want to be looking at. Now there's one other thing I'm going to show you in this tuner, it's a number up in this corner here, and this number, I don't know if you can see it well enough, um, but this number right here says 444. Now, I like to use the 444 instead of 440. This is a reference to the, the hertz, or the frequency of the A note, the concert pitch A note. Now, normally concert pitch is 440. I choose 444 because that brings when I play the C note, that brings it up to, instead of 523 hertz, it brings up to 528 hertz. 
Now I have a whole teaching that I'm, I'll be posting later on on the 528 hertz frequency which is called the healing frequency or even the frequency of creation and I believe that there is a significant difference. It's, it's only a slight sharpness if you were to hear it but it makes a lot of difference I believe and uh, we'll, we'll have that subject later on as one of the things that I post here on the YouTube. But anyway for now I put it on the 444. Now when I play with other instruments I go to the I have to retune to the 440 because I'll sound sharp to, to all of the other instruments if they tune there. And usually, to tell you the truth, I ask the instruments to tune to me since I have more strings than they do. A guitar has six strings, I've got 26 strings. So it's a lot easier for them to tune up to me than for me to tune down to them. And that's what I try to do. But if we're in a recording session or something that's demanding accurate pitch of all the instruments, then I will certainly be the one that makes the move. If I'm recording by myself, I tune up to the 444. Um, my last two CDs that I've done, I've, I specifically have arranged to, to record them in the 528 because I believe that there's a healing quality to the music that is unique to that frequency. We'll, we'll talk more about that later. So the first thing we're going to do here, coming back to the tuner now, is we're going to... Um, pick a note and play the note. Now that says C and remember the needle said red or green. Right now you can see just like with the other note F that we played that this is flat and that's pretty normal. This harp has been sitting for about a week since I tuned it last. It's pretty normal for all of the humidity and temperatures. We've had high temperatures here. Um, the high temperatures make the strings go a little more slack so it's going to be a little flatter. So we're going to go ahead and tune it up. Now this is a tuning wrench, or you can call it a tuning key. This is made with a square end that fits right over the square end of the peg here. And so when we want to tune this, we're going to tune it up just a bit. Sometimes I end up with it just a little sharp, and I don't mind it being a little bit sharp. And I'll uh, hold this up for you and play the note for you and you'll see where it stands. You can see that needle is almost spot on the middle. Oops, sorry. Just a hair sharp. It's okay to be a hair sharp. You're not going to be able to pick that up. Uh, most 99.999% of the people would never hear the difference between that. I was in a recording session one time with a fellow that played the cello and he could hear the difference between those. So we spent a lot of time tuning. Um, because his ear was very acute. So, now that's, the, that's tuning one string. Now what I like to um, emphasize on tuning a harp is that you do not want to tune one string after another all the way up. Because what happens is, as you tighten this string and then this string and this string, by the time you get up here and tighten this one, this string will actually be sharp because you've been progressively putting more tension on this end of the harp which is then pulling that up and putting more tension there. So what's best, what works out the best is if you can put um, a pattern together that allows you to spread the tensions out. So here's what I do. I start with the red, the C, and I will, I will tune the bottom red, the C, Okay, then I'll move to the next one, okay, which we already did, and then this one, and finally the top one. And if you have a bigger harp, there will be at least one more octave. Then I move to the blue, the F string. And you can hear that most of these are just about the same amount flat. And that's what I told you about the, the, the heat making the strings get a little more slack. Okay, 
Okay, so we have our blue. Now the next one I do is between the red and the blue, and that would be the A note. So we'll go to the A, and we'll jump up to the next A, and the, and the final A here. Now a little trick I learned well, a long time ago. <laughs> when you're up on these higher strings, um, sometimes they're real hard to get them right on pitch, and so sometimes you'll get it a little bit sharp. And what you can do is you can pull the string a little bit, and that just stretches it a little bit down to where you want it. And I've even seen violinists use this technique. And um, so on these higher notes, you can just do a little bit of tweaking that way. Um, some violins also have a little fine nut that you can adjust as well. So now the next note, after the A, we'll go back down to the D, right by the red. So we'll kind of move ourselves up a little bit. And the next D. And then the next D. And the final D here at the top. Now I got that one a little sharp, so I'm going to push it just a little bit. There it goes, right, right in where I want it. And then the G, which is next to the F, so we're going to come. And the next one. So you see I'm developing a pattern here. a little sharp, so I'll pull on that one a little bit. Got that one in. And then the, finally the top one. Okay. And then from the G, we'll go up to the B. We'll just drop below the C now. Now here's another, here's a little thing going on here now. You notice that I have a sharpening lever on the B note. If I tune this to the B natural, that will have everything in the key of C. But I can help myself out a little bit by tuning this to the B flat. And so I'll just do that and then I'll explain why I do that. Let's go ahead and tune it and then I'll give you my explanation here. So we're tuning it to B flat. Now here's why I want to do that. If I keep this down in B flat without any of the other sharpening levers, all the other notes, natural notes, that actually gives me the key of F, which starts here. Now, if I want to go to the key of C, all I do is put my B flats up to B natural. Now I'm in the key of C. So that gives me two keys really easily, really quickly. So now it's... Oops. So now I'm in the key of C just by putting that one lever up. So that's why I tune to the B flat. And actually you can do the same thing with the E flat. If you look on your piano, you remember that the, the two, two spaces where there's no black key is the B note and the E note. So if you'll tune those to flat, you can sharp those up to the naturals and then get the keys that have easily that have the flats of those. So that's just one little, little uh, sidebar on tuning a harp. Okay. So now we got the B, so the final note is the E. Oops, sorry. Okay. Okay, so there we are. We have all of the strings tuned. And we can go back to our uh, song we started with last time. We have... So now we're tuned. Okay, we can...
can go ahead and play. <clears throat> well, that's that introduces you to the cork tuner, introduces you to the tuning wrench, introduces you to the, the pattern for tuning. There's a couple other aspects I would like to mention while we're on the subject of tuning. Um, first of all, is just the basic care of your harp. Um, a harp is an instrument that needs to be taken care of probably more than a lot of other instruments. The first thing I would say is that the harp is very subject to humidity, to heat, and cold. I remember one time I was playing at an outside wedding in San Francisco and the fog started blowing in and it started cooling off fast. By the time I finished that gig, I was a full uh, note flat, I'm sorry, full note sharp because the, the cold had just come in and tightened those strings up and um, I actually had to stop and tune a couple notes just to be able to keep playing because some notes come out faster than others. So um, your temperatures, humidity can really affect the tone of a harp. Now another thing that I like to do if I'm going to be performing somewhere, I like to set the harp up ahead of time, tune it once uh, ahead of time and then let it adjust to the temperature and then come back just before I'm going to play and tune it again just to um, for it to be able to adjust into the humidities and temperatures of, the, of where we're at. A harp is very susceptible in that respect. Um, one of the things you want to be careful of with the harp is to be careful of the woods. Um, you want to keep it clean, you want to keep it, um, if, it's a, if it's an oil finish then keep it oiled so that it doesn't dry out. If it's a waxed finish then keep it, keep it shined. Um, there are different finishes on harps, so you know just be sure to find out what kind of finish was used on your harp and keep that finish up because you want to protect that wood. Uh, the inside of the harp is never finished, and so um, that wood is always open to your environment. So you want you're going to want to make sure that you do not leave your harp in a hot car. Uh, I know one person that did that and this whole soundboard delaminated in just a matter of a couple hours by being in that heat. So you don't want to come back to a hot car and find a ruined harp. That's not going to work too well. Um, the other thing is obviously you're not going to want it to sit in a damp basement. Um, that will get mold and also the, the, the glue that's used in putting a harp together is, um, what do they call it, aliphatic resin. And it holds very well, but if it gets a lot of humidity too much, it can start to, do, to um, soften up and let go. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep your heart fairly dry uh, in a fairly temperature neutral environment. So like sitting in the corner of your living room is a very good place to keep your heart. There's another good reason for keeping your harp in the corner of your living room too, because that means it'll be out where you can stop every once in a while and play it. <laughs> you don't want it to be set so, uh, out of sight somewhere so that you keep, uh, you have to go do, pull it out and all the things you have to do um, to just sit down and play a song. You want it available to you so you can walk by and go, oh, let me try this one out. And I tell people, I don't want to see you practicing. I hated practice when I was a kid. That was one of the worst things about my taking piano lessons is I had to put my half hour in. I recommend people keep their harp out and when you walk by it, just stop and touch it for five minutes. Just play a play a melody, something you're hearing in your head. Just just work it out a little bit, and then walk on and do whatever you're on your way to do, um, and do that several times a day. And and you'll find that that brings so much joy to your playing that it doesn't feel like practicing, and it's really not practicing. It's actually just um, what I'm. What I tell people is, you are not born with connections between your brain and your fingertips and harp strings. You have to develop those. That has, and that can only be developed by putting the time in. Every time you touch a string, you, you create a synapse from your fingertip to your brain. And every time you do it, it gets stronger and it gets stronger and stronger to the point where many times I can sit in the dark and play without even having to look at the strings because I've played so much that I just have those pathways just set into my my nerve endings and and my path my neuron pathways, 
And that's really what you need to do. It's really what happens with every instrument, but I think it's especially for the harp because there are so many people that pick up a harp and try to play something on it. They get so frustrated because they can't make this hand work with this hand. And that's quite natural for you not to be able to do that. It takes some time to be able to develop those synapses so that you can do that. Um, so the, we, we developed a pattern, and like I said, I, my suggested pattern is the C, F, A, D, G, B, and finally E. And by the time you get to the E, you're all tuned up in your strings. Now remember, also I'll just underline, I recommend that you um, do the B flat so that then you can make it a natural if you want to play in the key of C, or keep it flat if you want to play in the key of F. And then finally, I also recommended that you use the 444 on your tuner instead of 440, but you can be selective on that yourself too. That's, that's just a matter of my preference. Now, <clears throat> the one thing that I also wanted to talk about is, well, there's a couple things actually. Notice that, and I'll still try to be close enough here, the string comes over the tuning pin here, and so that means if you turn it to the, as you're looking at it, if you turn it to the right, that's going to tighten the string. If you turn it to the left, it's going to loosen the string. Now sometimes you'll have a harp that will be just the other way around. And so you're going to want to make sure before you start tuning that you're noticing which way your string is wound so that if you want to tighten the string, you're turning it the right way, and if you want to loosen the string, you're turning it the left way. And so you're just going to want to pay a little attention to how that's set up. Now the other thing, I'm going to take the harp off here for a minute. I want you to see back here that this is the this is where the strings come through the hole on this side and you notice there's a knot on the back of the string and if you break a string you need to know how to tie that knot. Now you'll notice up higher here these knots are tied around a little piece of leather sometimes they use a, a bead, sometimes they'll use another string, piece of a string many different things you can use but one of the most frustrating things that can happen is if you break a string so I'm going to try to show you on the video here and I hope it comes across okay how to tie that knot so that you can if you break a string you can change it because the string comes to you like this no knots on it just a long string. And this is monofilament nylon, which is what most harps use. So here's a little trick I learned. First of all, you make a loop like this, okay? And then you make a second loop like that. And both of these loops are coming over the front. I'm sorry, they're not coming over the front. <laughs> One, the first loop is coming behind and the second loop is coming over the front. Now the loop that's coming behind you're going to set um, you're going to set it, it fell out there. You're going to set into the second loop and then you're going to pull that tight. And I don't know if I showed that, you that very well. I'll do it one more time just to show you again. Make sure that it comes across. So you're going to make this first loop and then we'll make the second loop and we'll put the first loop inside the second loop. You can make it kind of like Mickey Mouse ears. Put the first one inside the second one. Get in there. Come on. And then you pull that tight there. Now you can see kind of how that looks there. And so what you do is you pull this real tight, like that, and that's called a harper's knot, and then you can put this through the hole, and then you keep pulling it, and put it till this comes right up against it, and then it stops, and that's your harper's knot. And then this end, you will thread through the pin, that's the tuning pin, and you'll start tuning turning the tuning pin and get at least three wraps on it 